Hello friends, today we will discuss about a very important topic that is plural effusion. Now what is plural effusion? Plural effusion is referred to as an abnormal collection of fluid inside the plural cavity. So what is this plural cavity is? Well, the plural cavity is a natural sac that is produced by nature to prevent the lung from uh, getting wear and tear during the constant process of inspiration and expiration from the rigid or partially rigid chest wall. The spiral cavity has a two lining. Outer lining that line that line that line the rib cage and the intercostal muscle is the parietal pleura and the pleural layer that lines the lung itself is the visceral pleura and the approximate fluid that is present in the pleural cavity is around 15 ml which is uh, regulated by the lymphoreticular lymph lymphatic system of the body the function of this 15 ml pleural fluid is basically act as a lubricant which um, prevent the lung from getting eroded by the chest wall. It is this pleural cavity where the if the pleural fluid accumulate to an extent that it compromises the normal respiratory process of the body then we could term it as pleural effusion. Now what is the uh, now what are the types of pleural effusion? In the types of pleural effusion we classify in, into four type depending on the nature of pleural effusion. Number one that is the serous fluid also known as hydrothorax. Blood if present in the pleural effusion then we call as hemothorax. Thirdly if a uh, chyle is present in the pleural fluid then we call it, call it as chylothorax and if pus is present in the pleural, pleural uh, fluid then it we call is a uh, pyothorax so these are the four type of pleural effusion depending on the nature of pleural effusion fluid now we're going to discuss individually about the cause of the pleural effusion to do that first we should may tell here that Broadly, the pleural fluid is uh, divided into two types that is transudate and exudate. What is the transudate and what is exudate? The transudate is actually a uh, result of a high pressure uh, system over the capillary causing uh, excess ultrafiltration from the capillary without damaging the capillary whereas exudate is a byproduct of inflammatory process where the uh, pus and other inflammatory uh, secretion trickle down between the cells into the pleural cavity so this is basically the transudate and exudate the difference between the transudate and exudate we'll discuss later now the cause of the uh, exudate well the cause of the exudate as we have mentioned here, as this previously that it is a yield of inflammatory process so we will going to tell about the inflammatory disease regarding the cause of exudate the first and the most common cause is obviously pneumonia pneumonia is most commonly encountered in case of pleural effusion worldwide the second most important cause and probably the most important cause in the developing country are, is the tuberculosis. The tuberculosis patient along with the pleural effusion will show the typical symptoms of TB that is night sweat, fever, evening rise of temperature, loss of body weight, prolonged cough, blood with sputum, etc. Thirdly, there will be a bronchogenic carcinoma. Uh, fourthly, 
there will be a collagen vascular disorder fifthly there will be pleural mesothelioma sixthly there will be a lympho lymphoma and leukemia and sixthly pneumonia so and uh, sixthly the pancreatitis sorry sorry so we have uh, in exudate the cause are the pneumonia the tuberculosis the malignancy the malignancy and uh, lastly the pancreatitis and pleural mesothelioma now we're going to discuss about the uh, cause of the transudate what is this transudate cause the well the transudate cause is basically the cause that causes the over pressure over the capillaries and the causes are the first and foremost cause is the heart failure it may be due to pericardial effusion it may be due to constrictive pericarditis it may be due to congestive cardiac failure then the uh, decrease in oncotic pressure so, uh, which is basically the decrease in protein content in the blood and found in nutritional hyperproteinemia and in nephrotic syndrome now the another important cause of transudate is cirrhosis of liver so what we find is that the transudate is basically a byproduct of three important pressure factor that we also known as the starling factors and they are increase in hydrostatic pressure decrease in oncotic pressure and thirdly uh, the thirdly uh, as we have told earlier that uh, uh, thirdly it is the uh, filtration problem the starling factor is described in the on the screen now we're going to discuss about the clinical features of pleural effusion while well, describing the clinical feature first we will going to tell the symptoms and the symptoms is uh, very much focused patient will first complain of chest pain then uh, some uneasiness in the chest while respiration and ultimately the heaviness of the chest patient may also complain of fever in case there is a uh, inflammatory process is involved such as pneumonia tuberculosis and malignancy and second most important uh, symptoms that are often complained by the patient is respiratory distress obviously because of the pleural fluid accumulated in the pleural cavity it prevent the lung from getting expand during inspiration and hence the respiratory distress occur now we're going to discuss about the signs of uh, respiratory uh, signs of pleural effusion well uh, disturbing the signs we, uh, we first do the general survey in general survey we find that patient prefer to lie in a uh, lateral position to a side opposite to the side of accumulation of the fluid so that the lung do not uh, feel the pressure of the pleural fluid second three patient may often present with pallor if the chronic inflammatory process is involved fever as we have mentioned earlier and emaciation and ill health in case of tuberculosis and malignancy now we're going to uh, discuss about the systemic examination under the heading signs. In systemic examination, the most important system obviously is the respiratory system. In respiratory system, we first do the inspection. That is what we see from a naked eye. On inspection, we find that the 
there is a intercostal fullness on the affected side the uh, mediastinum that is the ape that is the uh, trachea is shifted towards the opposite opposite side thirdly apex bit may be absent and uh, uh, while seeing fourthly the diminished movement will be observed by the uh, by uh, by the doctor and also the absence of intercostal suction so what we find on inspection that there is a shifting of the trachea apex bit may not be seen the intercostal suction is absent the uh, respiratory movement is diminished and intercostal fullness may be found now the palpation of the patient in palpation we see the following first we uh, see the diminished in movement or towards the affected side uh, due to the accumulation of fluid secondly we uh, see the shifting of trachea towards the opposite side and thirdly we find the apex bit which is uh, again shifted towards the opposite side and lastly we see for the vocal fremitus that is the transmittery sound which is obviously will be diminished due to the pleural fluid and hence the affected side will show diminished or absent vocal fremitus uh, now we will going to discuss about the percussion of the uh, patient in percussion we again uh, basically differentiate between the affected side and the non affected side in which we see if the stony dullness is present and if present which side it is present generally it is present in the affected side and then we see the shifting dullness shifting dullness is uh, uh, the confirmatory for the presence of pleural fluid and uh, similar to, uh, to the ascites uh, detection in cirrhosis of liver and lastly we see the normal resonant node which is obviously diminished or absent towards the affected side so in percussion we see the uh, stony dullness the shifting dullness and the normal resonant node and lastly the uh, auscultation in auscultation we look for the normal breath sound in which and uh, the normal breath sound is diminished or absent towards the affected side whereas whereas it is normal on the unaffected side then we look for the vocal resonance vocal resonance is again the transmitted sound that we are observing and hence it will be diminished towards the affected side due to the accumulation of pleural fluid and then the adventitious sound such as crepitation and ronca and pleural rub that is absent in this case and lastly in both the side the adventitious sound are absent and the succussion flash is usually absent so what we look for the uh, <coughs> auscultation we look for the normal breath sound we look for if there is any uh, succussion splash we look for if there is any vocal resonance and we look for if there is any adventitious sound which we will not going to find in case of rural effusion now we will going to uh, discuss about the management of the rural effusion in the management of the pleural effusion we will going to cover the two factor that is the investigation and treatment obviously without investigation no management is possible we will going to discuss them in the in the next video